everybody. This is Alicia, Liz, and Ant, and we are Servant Decoded. We're back to break down and deep dive into Servant Season 4, Episode 8, Tunnels. Hey, guys. Hello, hello. Hi. Oh, this episode was amazing, and I'm so excited, but I'm also sad because I can't believe there's only two episodes left. Yeah, it's pretty I, scary. I thought it was seven. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, bad news. I wish it was seven. Liz can't count. That went really. That went really quick. Yeah, went really uh, fast. I mean, I feel like it always goes fast, but I don't know. Just the last season, yeah, it makes it. I just feel like it's it's gone by in a flash. Yeah, every episode feels like ten minutes. Yeah, exactly. I agree. If even this yeah. last, but this most re- I don't know. I felt a little differently this this time yeah. around. I did too. It feels yeah, like yeah. every other episode, like one episode, will feel like nothing much happened and then the next episode will feel like we covered a lot in that 30 minutes it's weird it keeps kind of going back and forth yeah it's like the more we get the longer it feels the more yeah. stuff that happened but so this was a really good episode i liked it i liked it too. very good yeah how are you feeling how are you both feeling like after last week where we were all kind of on the fence about our feelings about it like what was this for you after that oh we're good now we're, we're ready to go it's redemption redemption yeah. mm-hmm. i feel the same way yeah yeah i felt like they really delivered in a lot of different ways through this episode so and really i'm excited to jump yeah. in and talk about it um liz you had some interesting things to say about the title so um i would love to to hear that yeah I feel like in the earlier seasons, the titles had multiple meanings. This season hasn't really been happening, but Mm -hmm. for this one, it may be so tunnel, obviously, or tunnels. They're in the tunnels doing the deal with Uncle George passing off Leanne. But I feel like the whole episode was really about the tunnels as a metaphor for our darkest parts that we keep hidden away. And the whole episode felt like it was about people's choice, people in situations where they can either choose the right or the wrong way to go, to do the right thing or the wrong thing. And also about thinking about maybe mistakes they've made and wanting to rectify them Mm -hmm. or having a chance to put things right definitely yeah i think so and and um i don't know maybe it's a weird thing to to point out because it doesn't it doesn't exactly align with what you say but i have noticed like it reminded me i don't know it reminded me of a little bit of season two in that i felt like sean and julian are on their own journey through this episode and then dorothy is on her journey Mm -hmm. And I remember feeling that way at the end of season two, but more like all three of them were on separate journeys. Like I remember in Goose, the penultimate episode of season two, you had Julian doing his thing, Sean doing his and Dorothy doing hers, and they just were kind of disconnected. Mm -hmm. Um, But I I think that's purposeful (laughs) because even though they're a family, they're also all individually on their own journey and meant to learn something from this that is not the same as whatever the other members of the family are meant to learn from this right the one event like explodes into like multiple facets of um just like you said uh yeah no that's a really good point alicia Mm -hmm. i agree and and i i like your thought like tunnels you know when you're in tunnels too sometimes you get to choose different paths which way am i going to go Mm -hmm. and i do think that that shows up here and Uh, it's also it's also like entering like a dark place and like going through that and then coming out to like a different light. It's mm-hmm. like a transitory. Yeah, there's a lot there. And also not knowing what's coming next. Right. Um, I thought it was really interesting the way that Sean and Julian kind of both reacted to what happened with George when they mm-hmm. delivered Leanne. Uh, well, certainly, yeah. that, but but <laughs> there was there was some interesting stuff going on there for me because I felt like, you know, Sean had manipulated Julian even just to get Julian to get on board with bringing Leanne there. Mm. But in some way, I also felt like Julian had to be in some kind of denial that he didn't realize that really this is what was going on the whole time. Like we talked about as we were watching the episode last week, like how are you able to accept these lies or whatever? Because clearly things are bananas. And he knows that. 
because well, at the beginning of the episode, we see him looking stuff up online because there's a part of him that's like, wait a minute, I don't really believe Uncle George here. Right, well, exactly. I feel like Julian, the past three episodes or so, has been all over the place in terms right? of what he knows, what he doesn't mm-hmm. know, what he believes, what he doesn't believe. It, it makes no sense. Yeah. Unless they're trying to indicate that he's been under Leanne's spell and it's now broken somehow. But sometimes it seems like, like, it seems like he was like in like each level of that over the past few episodes. Like, yeah. Even like moment to moment, it seemed like it like shifted strangely without. I agree. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't quite clear to me where his allegiance was or what he really thought that. Yeah, I, I, I agree that like moment to moment, he's almost kind of changing his mind or trying to sort through through this. Yeah, I mean, is she able to control minds? Or is it more the sense that, like, the darkness that's within her, he's having to fight back against that? Right, like, his own darkness. Yeah. He sees a a soulmate, in a way. Yeah. And even being told the, um, quote-unquote, truth by George, like, even in just, like, the act of that, it seemed like it you know, brought his voice back, Mm -hmm. which is interesting. So like his belief has some, at least some part to do with how she's able to like have a grasp on him, I think. Yeah. Well, we kind of talked about that. Yeah. Remember, I think it was more that she was happy. So he got his voice back. She took it away, obviously. Right. And then gave it back to him. I don't think there's any question about that. What Uncle George said about it all being in your head, that was Mm. part of the big lie. Well, and I think he he knows that on some level or he wouldn't be researching, you know, uh, Googling his symptoms. Like he, I think he wants, it's like he wants to believe George. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe he wants to believe George because that means that things aren't so horrible. (laughs) Right. Yeah. That, That she won't be killed in some terrible ritual. Yeah. Right. But he still doesn't totally trust it, or he wouldn't have been Googling his symptoms. But in the zoo episode, he was so completely Team Leanne, mm-hmm. and what are you talking about, Sean? You're making mm-hmm. her sound like a Stephen King character. And then the minute he saw the smoke, he's like, oh, shit, Leanne's oh. getting ritualized. <laughs> Runs down to save her. But this time, it's like, what, there's a fire? Oh, okay well yeah why are they all here what's happening you're just going to deprogram her right okay have fun yeah Yeah, it was strange to me that he was very quick to like go along with it i i don't know i don't know um i that's the one my one nitpick is what the fuck with (laughs) julian well uh, let's uh, stumble our way through it yeah yeah Um, there's a lot i kind of miss this show so much i know me too we're not there yet i'm gonna miss Dorothy most of all. Yeah. I mean, what Lauren's doing with that character, the faces. Oh, I agree. Yeah. It's all of the emotion. She's amazing. It's fear. It's a fearless. Uh, I just got to say again oh. that Lauren Ambrose has been robbed of awards. Oh, <laughs> God. Because, totally. You know, she, she without a doubt, deserves way more accolades than she has received for it. She's had the full this- spectrum here. Yeah. yeah walking this mad tightrope yeah between terrible uh, right. uh drama and uh, absurd comedy yeah it's it's incredible amazing yeah and to make you feel for someone and care about someone who can also be insufferable yeah so difficult so yeah. difficult and so like specifically vicious at times right yeah. yeah yeah and i know i mean look i know there are people out there that watch this show that can't stand her but i'm just not one of those people i not at all yeah no. i i find you know and and i think that that all of the actors have done a beautiful job of having creating these layered characters that have both you know amazing wonderful qualities and also qualities that are extremely unlikable yes Um, and that's kind of the point but we don't really hate them at least i don't think most of them most of us do Um, no No. that's part of the fun of everything exactly yeah Yeah. um how amazing was george's hair this episode oh my god it's so funny you say that because i thought the same thing i was like dude if i could have dorothy's hair like on it like she just Uh, is sitting in bed and her hair is incredible all the time like what the heck (laughs) yeah I can't get my hair to hold a curl for 10 minutes. I know. I wondered if she had like a photo shoot 
before yeah. or after because her <laughs> hair was looking but I have thought about that this season just the fact that like she always still looks good even though she's in bed and not really there like doing her hair and makeup so it's kind of strange to me I'm just like that is not how I would look in this situation oh god oh my god <laughs> it would not look like that I wish. Okay, so we open on the first scene where Lan is listening to the newscast uh, and the rats come running out of the drain. And I thought it was interesting for us to see Leanne in the attic. Yeah. We really haven't seen her in there very much. Like occasionally she seems to go up there, but it's not a lot. So I don't know if that's supposed to um, indicate like her level of sanity or insanity. I don't know, but it was interesting to see her up there. What did you guys think? I took it as she's still kind of sulking Mm -hmm. after what happened. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm with them kind of um keeping her out during dinner and and poking at her and she's like oh you got you don't make me angry yeah she (laughs) stomped off in a huff yeah i think she's huffing how long do you guys think that it was between the end of the last episode and this episode because i was wondering that do they say or what was your impression of that it just seems like i mean I guess they had dinner like most people eat what five six or six seven so it's probably like an hour or two later maybe okay so same night then or it's darker because it's raining and it's maybe not very much maybe it's like is it real like is it always like real time sort of or not really right i don't know what well, who knows um i didn't get the sense it was the same day but i don't remember what she was wearing yeah i don't either oh, i mean too, perhaps yeah. it's like the next day i don't think it's that that um i don't think it's more than a day or two right no. yeah also i thought it was interesting what did you guys make of him saying that it's like rats climbing the mast yeah and the well, storm drains are barely keeping up like when i heard the storm drains i guess i just thought of the fact of the cult like going through these tunnels Mm -hmm. and not being dangerous and and then i don't know i just wondered if there was some sort of correlation between the rats and um maybe the cult members or even later on when we see all of the homeless worthless youths like scattering it kind of made me think of that too oh well maybe Uh, they just mean like people trying to survive a desperate situation yeah or like maybe they're making a plague reference like the rats on the ships like coming over and like trying to like i think that's what it was meant you know to mm-hmm. say that you know rats are the first to to know when there's danger right um but i i love the parallel of the worthless use scattering like rats <laughs> and when he gave that odd saying i you know i started to write down odd phrasing but then I watched it again, and his partner looks at him like, what the? I <laughs> yeah. think, I mean, it's I've not... never heard that specifically, but I feel like it's like a pirate thing. I don't know if yeah. it's like totally unfamiliar, but no, I can't. Yeah. I, I looked it up online. It, Nothing? No, it's. Wow. There is a saying like rats jumping off a sinking ship or something like mm-hmm. that or fleeing. Oh, it's like close. Yeah, but they're not climbing masts. It does remind me of Titanic because in Titanic that mm. happens. Rats? <laughs> yeah. There's a scene where like all the rats are coming up um, and running down the hallway and it's very icky Ugh. and creepy. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because of the, they're going to drown because they're at the bottom level. Mm. Now look at her face. Now she's like, oh. Right. And I wondered, is this the dark entity being woken? To me, she looked annoyed. Like she was bothered or mad at the well, yeah. Well, then she goes, and then she continues to stick her head out and scream at the void. Yeah, it was hard to say. It was like she was annoyed by, I, I felt, okay, this is kind of one of the things that's confused me throughout this episode, because it's he, it happens here, and then it, and then she brings it up later. She talks about, like, the weather being for her, right. and my, like, I took it as she was creating the weather, but it seems now that in her mind, she's, like, competing against the weather. What did you guys, did, did that stand out to you? What did you make of that? Well, it seems like she's maybe in full either psychosis or is very aware of her power, and now she's like, oh, this is all, like, later, she's like, oh, this is all for me. So I guess it's both. Like, she's saying, do your worst, or, like, that's all you got. Like, I don't know if she wants more for herself or like. And what is it? It's for me. Like, what does that mean? It's for you. Like, and like she's called like she's causing it, I guess. Or like she thinks that it's all her doing. 
maybe. Or that God's upset with her. Right. Yeah, that's kind of how I took it too, is that like, oh, God's mad husband. and God's like trying to punish everybody well, that, because Right. That or he's helping yeah. me like fulfill whatever it is I intend to do here. Yeah. So what do you think, I what? I had initially thought, I think what you thought, Alicia, that um God was making it rain and she's like, What what? And so I got mm-hmm. But in thinking about it now, I'd forgotten how her emotions can sway the weather, mm-hmm. as we saw in Pigeon. And she's in a real, having a real pout fest up there. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if she had created the weather. And when we hear, is that all you got? It's after a bolt of lightning hits a pole on the roof. That's why I thought it was confusing. Mm-hmm. So I, I, if we look at it as her creating the weather with her bad mood and then the bolt of lightning, it's like, oh, like God trying to get at her. Is that all you got? Yeah. You, you missed me. What else are you going to do? And when she says it's all for me, I'd initially thought like coming at her. It's all to fight with me. It's all for me. But now hearing you guys talk, it does she- sound more egotistical. This is all Just- me. Right. I did just, this just because of the way she like delivers it like yeah I almost like believed that she believed it but not quite believed you know what I mean like it seemed like she like snapped okay so we've talked about the dark entity and going off the idea that it was in the house before her and that it somehow gotten into her I've been watching this episode to see if there were places where she seemed to change as if being taken over by the dark entity and I don't think it's as simple as that like it Mm-mm. like an, a demon you know taking yeah. over. but I think that it it's like it it taps into that inner darkness and you think she wouldn't normally do and that's why she's like I don't know why I'm doing these things. I'm not not trying to hurt people. I don't want to. I don't know why I keep hurting people. Yeah. And like well, but... walked, sorry, last one. When she walked out of the house in Neighbors after the attack, it looked like she was coming out of a trance. And she's looking at the sinkhole like, whoa, whoa, what? I did that? Yeah, I think, I also think though, because when she says, um, when she's saying like, is that all you got? And mm-hmm. it seems like a challenge. I don't know. A part of me just thought that she's like at the very, okay. At the very end, the thing that threw me off was at the very end when she's with Dorothy and she puts on that voice and she's like, no, Mrs. Turner, Mm -hmm. the way that she speaks at the end there, that is what threw me because to me, that was, that was meant to indicate that she has been plotting this and covering up this very day, like, Mm -hmm. like hot, like that, that was like, she is psychotic. This has been an act. Mm, Has it? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. But it was, it was to me, like when she said that in the way that she said it, it was meant to be like, oh, yeah, look, I can be sweet Leanne, and, but that wasn't really who I am. Well, and you're it- screwed. It's kind of how I took that. And so it did make me question the idea of like the entity just kind of taking control of her because well, that made me go, wait a minute. Has she always been psychotic from the beginning? Is that what they're trying to tell us here? And I was a little confused. Well, she was being, I think she she was being manipulative again, because, like, she's finally getting what she wanted, like, them to be alone. So she's Mm -hmm. like, I don't know why anyone would believe it, but, like, even the, even when they said about her pushing Dorothy, oh, well, she just fell, or, like, oh, I'm sorry, like, just, like, yeah, how could I have done it? I'm just, like, a girl. (laughs) Yeah. She she didn't push her, you know, she fell. Or mentally. But, I mean, it's the same thing this episode, like, the glass that hits Sean, Exactly. And the thing falling on top of Julian. It was like, an accident. I'm sorry. Oops. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I almost feel like it was meant to convey that she that she is easily swayed by her emotions. And that if mm-hmm. you cross her, she will take you down. She will Absolutely. make it so that you can't, you know, be mm-hmm. or do whatever it is that you want. How do you think and- that relates to the dark entity then so i think that like if we think about it we all all of us like have the capability within us of choosing darkness or light 
Right. Mm-hmm. We all have some darkness in us. We all have some light in us. And we have the choice to, you know, we, we have the choice on what is going to um, rule our life. Are we going to be ruled by whatever darkness is within us or are we going to move towards the light? And so perhaps it's not like the, the dark entity has totally taken over her, but more that as she was around that dark entity, you know, she's in that house and that's weighing on her. And she's seeing all of these things and, you know, kind of putting it into her mind about what is useful and what isn't, you know, and she watches the Turner. She watches Dorothy be manipulative. She watches like what works for them. And she chooses the darkness over the light. Okay. So as she's been doing more and more of that, that's what Uncle George meant by like, she I think. Was- yeah. And that's why Uncle George gave her the choice because he's in his mind, he's going, I know that she has light within her. Yeah, and I really such... am hoping that that's what she chooses. Exactly. Well, there goes my whole theory about the bubbling hole in the basement. <laughs> yeah, that's unfortunate. I was, I was sort of brute and on that one. Um, For the people that do not read our discord, I was theorizing <laughs> that the whole, after the initial split in the basement mm-hmm. from season one, I was thinking, what if that was the dark entity's lair or whatever? Right. And that 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 first split woke it up. And as the hole got bigger, it created more access for the dark Mm -hmm. entity to have with the people. That's why we saw Sean and mostly Leanne hanging out at the hole. Yeah, that's great too. And that was where the first incident incident of or instance of Leanne using the journal instead of the Bible right. to make something mm. happen. Yeah. It, it seemed like automatic yeah. writing where she didn't even realize what she was doing. And then all of a sudden there were the, there were V's and then, and it was for something hurtful, you know. Speaking of that, of just like, like a quick interjection, I, and I put the screenshot on our last video because we were talking about it. But if you look at it on both pages, there is a open circle on the one on the right. No. Yeah. And I don't, I have no idea why, but it is very, very evident like that the there hole? is like a blank circular space in the middle on the right side. Maybe that's the hole, the bubbling hole. Maybe. Because <laughs> it is in a circle now. It's circular. Yeah. Mm. I, but yeah, so that was my theory that, you know, the more time you spend down there, the more it gets its you know, it can tendrils into yeah. you. What do you think, Ant? I don't know what to make of that. I guess I'd have to look at that again. But it's yeah. like, um, it's like everything else. It seems to be both, not both, but I mean, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it has this like unruly influence on yeah. so many different things. Yeah, and it does feel kind of arbitrary. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like chaotic. Mm-hmm. It's like either she's doing it or she thinks about it, and it happens like as a you know as a result of her having any kind of attention on any one thing mm-hmm. until it gets specific later, sort of. Right. I just, I was, like I said, I was looking for moments when mm-hmm. she looked different because she's talking to God so much in this episode or talking yes. or yeah. back talking. <laughs> yeah. Well, but she also like, I do, I also kind of think that like she has, the darkness has overtaken her little by little throughout the series. So I do feel like at this point it is fully inhabiting her um, with little glimpse. If you think of like a possession um, mm. or think of like a movie you've watched where there's possession, like a lot of times it starts small mm-hmm. and then the behavior and the, and you know, the, it just like seems to grow um, kind <clears throat> of like the darkness in her, like little by little it's taken over her. And mm. now you see more darkness than you do light. But we do see the light briefly when Uncle George is talking to her. And she's crying. And there is, I do think that there is that that part of Leanne that's still there that wanted yeah. to be good oh, and sure. wanted to to do the the right thing. But you know, as soon as he called her wicked, that was it. It was done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and when she was having the conversation with Dorothy in the nursery. That too. Mm-hmm. You, know, you you watch her fight her face and it's totally open and vulnerable mm-hmm. and full of love and hope. Yeah, I agree. So all right, well, I'm right. going to rethink my dark entity thoughts. <laughs> it's a little time. <laughs> Did you catch where you can see on another TV, or maybe it's that TV, the banner says, Doomsday Upon Us? Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't. I don't think I caught that. Or yeah, they're like little, little weird things. Philadelphia. Uh. It's, you can see the Doomsday Upon 
and I couldn't read the rest, but yeah, because that's a great catch. I totally missed that with revelations and end of days and all the stuff. Um, uh, storms are storms and flooding are a precursor along with plagues and locusts. Right. Was there anything about it being a lunar eclipse that that like I looked that up. Um, it, it's the same that it's a it's a precursor to end of days. Okay. Okay. There are a couple of quotes in the Bible, but nothing really worth talking yeah. about. Mm. I mean, I think when they followed it up with Black as Night, you know, that, <clears throat> that kind of gives you the yeah idea of, yeah, things are dark in general. So now we see that Julian is looking up loss of speech and the impacts <laughs> of stress on phantom symptoms. <laughs> I love that full health med. <laughs> He's Googling his symptoms. Poor Julian. Poor Julian. Yeah, that's not what it is, Julian. Yeah, I no. mean, I think that he's trying to find, I mean, he's trying to figure out whether George was lying or not. Oh, for sure. It certainly tells you that he's not as fully convinced, you know, as oh, yeah. George wanted them to be. He's trying to convince himself, maybe, or like yeah. wrestling with whatever that is inside. Mm-hmm. Now, there's also still the possibility that we are dealing with mental health issues within this family. Um, I mean, I think that but, goes without saying outside of everything. But yeah. Sure. <laughs> That's a good point. Um, but I do think the stuff that he says, or the stuff that's said on the newscast through here is interesting, too. Yeah, about animals. Mm-hmm. He seems genuinely afraid of storms. He does. He does seem very afraid. Is he afraid of the storm? Is he afraid of her? The epicenter? I thought it was weird that he mentioned the epicenter being three miles away. Well, you can count by the lightning. Yeah. Then, but, like, I guess you'd only really notice that if you had a fear or, like, a reason to Yeah. need to know that. Like, when I was little, I was afraid of storms because of a mm. bunch of tornadoes that came through our town one, oh, one day, and so yeah. I was traumatized. And... Oh, sure. But, um, like, I don't know. A part, the thing that I thought was, like, that in some way that that was his way of saying that, like, Leanne wasn't the storm. Because yeah. in my mind, like, the storm is right here on top of you. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. But, yeah, you're right. He's, like, distancing <laughs> her from it in his mind, at least. Yeah. So almost to... as though it's, like, he's trying to convince himself that, like, she's not causing it. Yeah, they keep doing that this episode. Like, mm -hmm. you know. Um, um, the whole counting thing is, like, a, a child's. Yeah. Which... This, again, brings up this, um, I don't know, I, I just feel like Julian is very frequently paralleled with child things. Mm -hmm. Well, he's he's very yeah. childish, I think. Yeah, like people will talk to him like he's a child. Sometimes he'll say things or he'll act like a child. He's mm -hmm. treated like a child repeatedly, which um, yeah. I don't know. I think that if there's no um, connection between him and Sergio Marino, that I'm just going to make my own episode. Oh, definitely. Hey. You, you have to. They'll let you. I'll, I'll, see why not. I'll watch the hell out of that. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, we'll, we need we'll to stop a... because clearly this was the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> it's also the thing of like being little brother. Yeah. Because Dorothy's so domineering, even though they have mm -hmm. separate lives. Well, not separate anymore, but I mean, they had their own. You always fall into those family dynamics when you get together, I think. Yeah, well, that's very true. Dorothy right. treats him like he's a, uh, a little brother, you know, but like even younger than that, the way that she'll yeah. sometimes hold him or the way she'll talk to him. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, and he kind of is. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I have written throughout my notes moments where it was like, why is Julian being compared to a baby or to a child again? um repeatedly mm. uh even with like when leanne was bathing him and washing him right oh for sure. her do that too yeah and then also i find it just um interesting not i don't know about interesting but you know leanne is up to her tricks trying to use sex to manipulate julian mm -hmm. and it's not working this time mm. so i know that that seat that's probably bugging her but mm -hmm. she's still trying. She's still trying to connect with him in that way because she thinks that's what will work. We really see later how George calls Leanne out on the fact that she's more powerful than she's letting on. So I don't know. This is just another example where I'm like, I think she's probably pretty perceptive as to Julian's state of mind here. I took that as him trying to like bait her, really. Bait her in what way? Like, 
like when they have her tied to the well i don't know if you want to get to that now but he was like oh you don't need these ropes we know you can like right. get yourself out of them like he was like trying to like make mm. her comfortable so george is trying to bait her that's what i felt like in that moment but you might have a point too julian's trying to bait her now no 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 no, no. later no, later, later on when George says, oh, you're so yeah. powerful. Like, we, we know we don't need these ropes. Like, why did I even do that? Like, Yeah, okay. that he's doing it to kind of, like, make her... Catch her off guard, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's a good point. You're probably... Yeah, and that's interesting. It's in his tone is what yeah. I picked up on, but, like, we'll see. Yeah. No, that's a good observation. I didn't even think about that, but that would make sense, too. As far as Philly is concerned, this really could be the storm oh, of the century. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Mm. What do you they, think? No, because Julian literally just said to her, not every oh, storm right. is the storm of the century. And then they're like, this could be the storm of the century. And then he says it, yes. <laughs> like, not seconds yeah. later. Yes, I, I yeah, I noticed that on the rewatch because I didn't catch that on the first one. Mm. Yeah. Funny little joke. Mm-hmm, yeah. And then we were about to get this weird line. So weird. So, so you know, if you don't don't look at him. If you don't look him in the eye, he'll go back to sleep. But she is looks that, scared of him. Is yeah. that is that a thing? No. No. Of course not. That's that's I've what heard. I said that night. I was like, I've never heard that in my life about a yeah. baby. Like what like what in the heck? Where did yeah. that even come? Like, how did you even learn that if that's actually what's happening to your child or in her face? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Weird parenting 101 <laughs> with Dorothy and Sean. That's yeah, look at her. She would... looks terrified. Yeah. Well, it, it's like, just don't look, don't look, don't it's look. It's kind of what you would say about an animal. <laughs> don't look at the baby. Like, don't look it in its face. It's gonna, <laughs> oh. Don't make eye contact. Right. With like a bear or like a dog, it's not like exactly. your child. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but I wrote in my notes, you know, notice that Sean is bringing Jericho into the room because he's worried about Jericho being taken with Leanne. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we want also i noted that he rolls jericho under those two pictures yes <laughs> <laughs> and she kind of looks at him like what are you what are you doing and it's just the way that he does it and it and then i kind of thought like oh what if the pictures represent the all of like the lives that have been lost oh god Alicia. Oh no. You can always count on me to come through with the very dark interpretation of stuff. Oh, there's yeah. always something. <laughs> that's, that's a dark one. That's up there. Did okay, you put the big towel under the back door because that weather's stripping me? This is such a joke. What did you put that one towel down because <laughs> that one the big towel. Oh, the big towel. The big the house is falling apart. What are you doing? Worried about one yeah hopefully you put the big towel down out. and you know like the attic has a giant puddle it <laughs> what else <laughs> i don't i can't i mean part of it to me just was like dorothy you know she likes to be in control and i think part of this episode was us seeing how here's this crisis that's happening that she there's nothing she can do about anything no so you're like um, taking the smallest thing you can like yeah that exactly yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah love you dorothy okay <laughs> i love this moment worthless okay youth. the scene with the worthless youth at the at the back door is really interesting i love this you can't stay in the park anymore okay so we've got the line if the storm doesn't want you here you should go what what the fuck i guess like him like it is maybe what she's implying or, or like, her right yeah because then the next thing she says well it, it but based on our conversation about the weather that's her subconscious saying i don't want you here yeah, but that's how you would address that to somebody why would you say i i don't want you here like right. just the storm that's, that's so the thing. weird we've been assuming that everything. like the weather is leanne but now it seems like we're being told that the weather is opposing leanne yeah I so then does that imply that storm equals god or whomever the all-powerful is that she's but, in opposition mm, to mm -hmm. no but the next thing she says would make it something different exactly. for me at least so the next thing can be my voice in the world why the hand on the forehead it's like a baptism i guess like she's like go like preach my word is how i would take it like right it was very christ-like like, to me go yeah but, like go but make she, like 
Okay, she initiated it. Right. I mean, she took Liam's hand and put it on her forehead, and it's just like a sign of respect, I guess. Mm-hmm. I'm, I laughed when she's like, "You can't be alone. <laughs> it's going to keep you safe." <laughs> Mm. Not you guys, worthless youths. <laughs> Y'all have barely done much. <laughs> if anything. And, well, I yeah. think the, yeah, be my voice in the world. Beautiful. To say Excellent. what? Just yeah, to what like is... spread the message of her, I don't know. I really spread don't what? Know. Right. Yeah, I guess. That's I what know. I wrote. What What are they spreading? What are they saying? Yeah, what is, well, what is your message, the... Lan? Well, that's the thing. Maybe it's your that deity? She, maybe it's that, well, she is. Maybe it's that she doesn't have anything, though. Like, she's so inexperienced and, like, just kind of in control of this massive situation, seemingly. It did make me wonder, though, like, if this whole time we're assuming that she is a fault. I mean, I think that, okay, I think that the show is telling us that Leanne is a fallen angel. I think that, uh, yeah. I think that that's pretty clear. So I, I did feel like it was confusing because if you're a fallen angel, you're not, I mean, she's not Christ, right? Well, she's no. not... But yeah, it's, so. it's still, I mean, at least for me, it's just like the idea of like a functioning religion or whatever. Like she showed them how to draw pictures and things like, so there are probably other little things like that. Maybe she needs to like spread that sort of an idea. Like, Yeah. Well, um, to jump ahead to her conversation with George in the basement, where they're kind of going back and forth over if the world's going to end or not. <laughs> and she says it may not be, you know, like his world, but the, mm-hmm. sun, will, the sun will still come up the next day or every right. day. So I wonder if as the worthless youths are people that escaped the cult and have followed Leanne because she did it, if that's the word, it's like the modified religion. Right, know? exactly. They like but, take like her story of like deferring and like defeating those people and well more like yeah, yeah like you can live another way right yeah it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be in the shadows it doesn't have to be in secret we don't have to do this that and that you can shower <laughs> yeah yeah and she even says like you don't you know we think about the times where she's like talked to cult members who were trying to capture her or kill her or whatever Mm. Or mark her and she's like we were we weren't just reborn just to serve him or something like that right, right. that was the beginning yeah. of the season right so um i guess she is trying to i mean okay do you guys think that leanne sees herself as a deity or do you think that she sees herself as just like one of the rest of them i think one of the rest but i think that she's enjoyed you know being their leader i think she's liked being in control but i don't think that she mm-hmm. sees herself as you know next jesus as a god maybe not yeah. on that level no i guess she might know she's special mm-hmm. whatever that implies yeah but no not god level mm-hmm. i love the door with the cardboard from the goat head mm. <laughs> i didn't put, even put get some that. cardboard on it i don't make it no it's, it's okay that'll work that's that's what we do around here. That's fine. <laughs> it's all good. Put a towel down. So when she shuts the door, I don't know if you guys notice this, but when she shuts the door on her, you actually hear crickets. Oh wow. Yeah. I missed that. So I miss that also too. I missed it the first time too. I caught it during my rewatch. Yeah, she shuts the door and you hear like the sound of the crickets. So that also made me think of like her talking about go be my voice in the world that they were like her crickets. They were going to go out into the world and like uh, echo her mm -hmm. story. Yeah. So now we've reached the scene with Sean and Julian in the tunnel and they clearly had planned to wait till late to meet together. Okay, I'd like to talk about this. (laughs) In my notes, actually, yeah. Let's talk about this. In my notes, I wrote down it's like when parents tell their kids that they're taking the dog to a farm where it can run around. Oh, no. That's <laughs> right? Talk about dark. Well. He's like, yeah, sure, buddy. Like, yeah. That's course. gonna happen, right? <laughs> no, yeah. no. Just let me program her. It's great. He's gonna talk to her a little bit. Yeah. Oh, man. So I Is thought it? it was really interesting that Julian brought up the idea of deprogramming her. 
right and what that could really mean and i don't know we've only got two episodes left so i'm sure i'm wrong but um i still have that thought of what if the turners okay at the end george tells you're not at the end but like george says to leanne you've trapped these people in a living hell Mm. and i know there's been a lot of talk about and we've talked about it whether or not like you know are they alive are they dead are some of them alive or some of them dead whatever but but also, the way that Uncle George seemed to know Dorothy, um, and it could just be because he's been watching her for so long because Leanne has been obsessed with like, her. The, the fact that they that he used the word, word deprogram, and we did see that get used before too, because Dorothy talked about like her needing to get deprogrammed from having been in a cult. That's language that they use for like you know when they come out of like like different religious things or cult like therapies when you program yeah, like our... exactly mm. but it did make me wonder if perhaps like if it's possible to actually deprogram people then maybe there's still something to them having been at least involved with the cult in some way and if she's trapped them in a living hell is this potentially like some cycle that they've been in that just keeps repeating them repeating itself over and over again um you know like, with all the callbacks that we see and all of the things that seem similar but different it just made me you know continues to make me wonder like how many times has this played out i wondered about that too like all the miscarriages and right. the things we've seen that make it look like different times or even different timelines yeah that's mm-hmm. like missing time yeah or right missing time i thought about like them being in these loops closed loops and they just keep repeating 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 exactly until they get it right who knows and that kind of led me to who are the clsers who are the you know the the og cult what do they do when they're sent to places like the marinos is it like to stop the loop is it you know how does that factor in and like what determines where they like who they send who to I'm never gonna find that out i don't think but that's the thing that well, i'm they, yeah they talk about it later a little bit he was like you were sent here as an act of love so well, that's what i was gonna say is that you know as an act of love are they going to houses where there's trauma where people aren't communicating hmm. what if it's that it was an act of love for leanne well right she loves dorothy i think but but also or, but like, like the love george has for her like maybe they sent her there thinking that whatever is wrong with her would be fixed by letting her have like this oh an act of love on someone else's part like george loves her or like the two like you know the cult loves her so they sent her there in benefit for her like does that make yeah. sense yeah. yeah that makes sense that's interesting yeah yeah I, I do think he just meant, you know, he no, was trying totally. to get, he was trying to get on her level. Right. Like, I get it. I understand you came here with good intentions, but it's turned selfish. So right. got to get you out of here. Oh, George. <laughs> Poor George. Right. So how am I going to say, hey, I want to see you in the basement at 2 a.m. <gasps> okay. Is, you Time to pause again. <laughs> Little parallels, huh? So, Yeah. No, the um uh, uh what am i supposed to say i want to see you in the basement at 2 a.m okay like i do think that that might still play into the we're on a vicious like loop a cycle of stuff here i don't know and th- here's the thing is that i'm just afraid that this is something that we're never going to find out that we're not going to know about but like the the amount of repetition and the callbacks to like different things just really, really makes me want to believe that there's something else going on, you know, to refer to it being 2 a.m. Like, is that just meant to be a callback? A callback like, to, you know what I mean? They, like, what? what? Yeah. It's like a motif. Is that a motif if they do yeah. it more than three times or three times? Motif, yeah. That would, right. yeah. So it's like kind of the witching hour. And it's always like, you know, they buried her. It's a dark thing. They're going to yeah. kill her here. It's a dark thing. Yeah, but Dorothy getting up at that time, I thought it was meant to indicate like that's the hour that he expired. That right. expired. That would be the third. Well, that would be the fourth thing then, I guess. Wow. Yeah, that's, that seems ugh. to be what they wanted us to believe. Yeah. So I guess that just kind of reinforces the idea in my mind of like it possibly being a very cyclical thing that this is far from the first time that this has all happened. I was I just know. happy to see my naked ritual. But, yes. <laughs> come in totally props to you liz for (laughs) calling out the sex in the tunnel 
joke. The plan. <laughs> yeah. The plan, plan. Yes. I love when I watch and like different things that we've said, you know, on our podcast, like happen. It's so much fun to be like, ooh, like, like a point system. Yeah. <laughs> you can make it a sex thing. Oh, wow. <laughs> Just when I thought you couldn't make this any more disgusting or morally abhorrent. I think maybe on some level, despite the magic nonsense, maybe he does kind of like her for some reason. I think Julian's just a very inactive person in and general. He's also, he's also I mean, pretty obstinate. Well, yeah, but you know, he's like, when we meet him, he's this, I don't know what, doesn't work, goes to the opera, mm-hmm. drinks, <laughs> around, drinks wine, <clears throat> you know, like a lost rich boy a wanderer yeah 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 vague and, money yeah right and and so i and i think his personality is like his life like never makes any real decisions about anything never commits it's very quick to like be like no even though he might want whatever it is being offered sure <laughs> so yeah when sean's like i need you to do this thing i think his um automatic response would be you know no H- how would i do that how would i even do such a thing and then he even takes it one further saying oh she trusts you way more than she trusts me right, no, right. That's so false <laughs> like what i thought like, he was, it was interesting the way that he referred to sean as like a father figure mm. right that also made me think of the Marinos and just the parallels between like George and Sean and Mr. Marino with the hand clenching. And so I started to go back and like compare sort of who are the influences in Leanne's life. And maybe there's repetition there as well um, mm. in terms of the types of people that she ends up surrounding herself with that kind of mirror whatever her trauma is or whatever she's needing. Oh, interesting so dorothy wakes up and she seems to be afraid and we hear a lot of these like weird noises to me it does sound like the pipes and stuff that we've heard before uh like when she's showering and whatnot i don't know what did you guys think about when like those noises that she's hearing it sounds like like you said like pipes or banging or i guess footsteps if you want to push that but like Mm -hmm. it's yeah it's eerie but it's not anything like i heard you know bumps and thumps Mm-hmm. But, the storm. If you, but if you think about what Dorothy has been through in that house, yeah, I would be terrified by any noises in the middle okay. of the night. Could be I'm a probably, could probably be not a, having mm. could yeah. be a wild could be a wild dog. Could be a a mm-hmm. goat. A bee. <laughs> a bee. Could be a, a horde of bees. Or a terrifying children's mobile. Oh my god. Blowing in the wind. No. Which is no. what it is. One of the amazing things about this episode is I just felt like they did an amazing job at keeping you on edge the entire time. Oh, yeah. I wrote, Dorsey sees him a walker now? I know! Oh, well, it's four That's months. so true! I thought it was quick, too, but she was in the hospital for three months. She was, yeah. yeah. And she was in bed, like, yeah. two episodes ago. She yeah. couldn't even, and even put says. pressure on her. I know. Yeah. She's like, I don't need the whatever anymore, the wheelchair or whatever it is. She's like, the I don't need it anymore. And I'm like, since the- when? And so I wrote down, like, has Leanne helped her heal as well? That's what I had been thinking. Or is this another clue to the fact that Dorothy is already dead anyway? And nobody can actually legitimately die again if they've already died. Well, I mean, they keep harping on, or not harping, they keep f- focusing in on that scar. Yeah. So I, I wonder... Right. Did you I notice think... in the in the mobile that the chef is missing? It looks like yeah. a lot of them are missing. Ooh. I noticed that immediately. There's no chef. Oh, I did not notice that. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna... And then that faceless dancer thing. Really? It looked really. So. It looked pretty empty. Hmm. For that was just like different figures. Because wasn't there like... a horse too? Looks like four horses, horses on there. Four horses of the apocalypse. Yeah, of the apocalypse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like all the people are gone. You're right. Or most of them. <laughs> wow. Mm-hmm. That was a good catch, y'all. What's the deal with Leanne just sitting in there? What is she doing? She's pouting. <laughs> or maybe contemplating the youths being gone. <laughs> the worthless youths. I love how as much as like her and Dorothy seem to not be able to stand each other, as soon as Dorothy tells her to get something to wipe the floor up, she does it anyway. Mm. Yeah, That's we learned funny. that trick in seance. That mm-hmm. Dorothy yep. gives her a command. Mm-hmm. That really gets her going. 
Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Dorothy's saying sometimes you remind me it's like, it cause I really feel like Leanne doesn't just want to be loved by Dorothy, but she almost wants to be Dorothy. Yeah. She tried that in zoo and that failed yeah. miserably. And she put her dress on. So yeah, I think this whole Dorothy saying, oh, you remind, and, and do you think that, D that Dorothy is being purposefully manipulative here and saying that on purpose? Or do you think that she means it? Uh, I, I feel like she's being manipulative. That's what I think too. I, I think it's both. Um, I think Dorothy's smart enough to realize, okay, we tried this way, we tried that way, we tried brute force, we tried secret abductions, we tried the neighbor. Nothing's worked, so why not try talking to her, appealing to her love for me? Yeah, because Dorothy, you know, that's a good. That's what a good journalist would do. She <laughs> gets the facts and then uses them. Mm, try every angle. It's a good point. Yeah, and she's, she's already at a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's obsessed with me, so I'm gonna use that. Let me use that. Yeah, but I I also do believe, as I always say, that Dorothy does care. Yeah, she's still a mother, sure. Oh, in my she notes, I wrote. Yeah. I think a big theme of this episode is the tie, the bond between Dorothy and Leanne. Mm. Like the needlepoint, the red string binding them together they chose each other you know it made yeah. me think too though about how if you recall back i think we saw it in season one but that moment in the bedroom when dorothy's pregnant with one of the kids i think that one might have been harry she gets and so they're talking about it and she makes that joke to sean that like he can name or she, or he can name the next one or whatever but it's a girl and she can tell that she's going to clash with her right mm -hmm. right so in some ways I, I i feel like that's what leanne is leanne is also you know she's she's clashing with the other child that she has right and so it brings just me back to like, that. they like yeah. chose each other mm -hmm. well, they chose each other terrifying. and because leanne's been looking for a mother to replace the bad mother she had she's looking for a corrective experience Mm -hmm. And then Dorothy, obviously, wants this child that she lost, a corrective experience yeah. in Jericho. And then Leanne is seemingly in control of Jericho. So it's this whole, all bound together. Right. Mm, right. And it may, I, when Leanne says, you know, it's just us, I squealed because that's what I've been <laughs> yeah, waiting for. That was such a good reveal. Not a reveal, but, you know, like a nice little button. And throughout the episode, there are a lot of shots where they're like mirrored or, you know, parallel. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I even, I think I said that with, at like one point because I felt, oh, when they're in the shower in a minute, I think I wrote that down. Yeah. Like even in the shower scene, where it's sort of mirrored where Dorothy is getting in the shower and the water's coming on her and then Leanne is opening the roof and we see the rain falling on her like a shower and it's yeah. kind of parallel back and forth. Yeah. What do we think what do what do we think about the shower versus the bath? I was kind of thinking about that. Like Elaborate. initial like way back when she was taking yeah. a bath, like in the was it the first season? Oh that, yeah, the first even the first, I think the first or second episode. Not that, I mean, you know, maybe it doesn't mean anything. I know she wasn't injured, but like, you know, being washed in the tub and now she's like on her own, yeah. barely able to do that. And she's taking a shower. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's like a cleansing of the situation or just like her, her own, I guess, advancement to recovery. I just thought it was yeah. interesting they use that imagery. Yeah. Well, you know, she was in the shower when she was comatose and Natalie brought the doll. Mm -hmm. Um, I think now that she's about to wake up maybe it's like a, a call back to us to remember mm. that moment yeah, or that's interesting that state of mind she was in and now she's keep... back on her feet with them because oh. they keep i love that because... too yeah mm. because they keep focusing on that scar on her right. back like... why do you think they kept focusing on the scar well i was going to say the cult they do the self-flagellation and she doesn't have those marks on her back but Again, it seemed like penance. Oh, or, yeah. I guess, yeah. I guess we're, we're assumed to mean it. And to, healing. Right. It's a surgery scar? That's pretty bad for... Yeah. Yeah, well... Whatever that surgery And it's, that's really right. interesting, though, the parallel between that. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because after that, she's crawling to Jericho. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 
that's what I thought of. Yeah, that's great. That's very interesting. I like that. Why is it so impossible for you to like me? Look how young she oh, looks. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Let me try and handle this one thing on my own. Maybe we can keep talking. But are you? See how that works like out. You see things mm -hmm. a different way. That, that is what I think she's up to. Yeah, yeah, it did work. I mean, they did manage to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's it almost is makes me think though of like you know Dorothy is going about it one way and Julian and Sean are going about it another way and of course once again they haven't talked with each other so right. they're not on the same page and Dorothy might have been on to something but Julian and Sean just totally ruin it <laughs> <laughs> absolutely that's what you get for magical thinking <laughs> but yeah that conversation when she says maybe i can help you see things a different maybe i can help you see things differently mm. yeah um i just thought that was interesting maybe i can help you not be quite so <laughs> obsessed with me <laughs> crazy that'll work i love dorothy saying though that it's not your job to make me happy like right i i do think that that shows like some of dorothy's growth oh um, yeah because well, i don't think that we would have really heard dorothy say that before no yes. she would say absolutely it's everyone's job to make me happy exactly do people yeah. not know that yet yeah um that was another thing that i think binds dorothy and leanne the faustian bargain thing of like with dorothy it's always people when she's happy things are mm. good when she's mm -hmm. not happy oh people get hurt things that's go good, bad that's please. a good parallel yeah yeah so that is good the scene <laughs> of her getting the shower is such an incredible shot <sighs> yeah I would like to know, we see her get into the shower so much. And like when we were Discord chatting, I was like, I have so many screenshots of her in the shower. That, mm. her. Because they always make a thing about it. And we always hear a noise and she looks up. And I keep, so like throughout this entire scene, I kept thinking that something was going to happen in the shower because I just felt like, you know, there has to be a reason they keep giving us these shots of her in the shower. Alicia. <laughs> nothing ever happened <laughs> everyone's getting clean your dorothy shower file it was like a baptism in a way exactly yeah, yeah that's kind of the way i looked at it yeah but do you remember whether or not that fits i don't know but you like to look at dorothy in the shower i do i like to look at <laughs> i like to look at lauren in the shower no this has gone at, too far <laughs> at least we at least we admit it please there's a reason. There's got. There has to be a reason. <laughs> and and not just that that's where she was when she got the reborn doll, but no. it's important. So. I don't know why, but you know, keep your file. It's kind of like another transitory dirty. thing. You mean dirty to clean? Yeah, dirty to clean. Like getting oh your yeah, clothes, like refreshing. Yeah. Your... Okay, that makes sense. Well, which goes along with what I was saying earlier about tunnels and the meaning of the episode. Right. The choice between good or bad. Mm -hmm. And then even the cult itself, like George showering himself to be a liar and then going back to his dirty self to tell his the raggedy truth. true self. Yeah. His yeah. raggedy true self. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. All right. It's all for you, Dan. <laughs> Leanne's laugh crying really is pretty yeah, unsettling. It's all for you, Damien. All of it is for me. And he thinks mm -hmm. that he can beat me, but he can't. Because I've won. Come downstairs. I want to show you something. Oh, she's um, misunderstanding everything. Yeah. Yeah. No. Dorothy loves me again. That too. Sean! Wait for me. Yeah, that's, um... She doesn't get it at all. Right. Like, it, yeah, when she said that, I thought, wait a minute. Like, that's not what's happening here. No. <laughs> nope. Well, okay. So I said, you know, Dorothy loves me again. And right. you said that, too. Right. What What did you mean? She, she doesn't see the forest for the trees and that she doesn't see that she's causing it, I think. Ah, because she's like, oh, this is clearly to try to like wash me out for some reason, but like, right. But she's at such a level that like this is what's happening because of her, I think. Okay. 
Well, what so about the rain in Pigeon when it washed her clean at the end after she thwarted the cult? So she thinks that she's like battling these things as opposed right. to causing them, you're thinking. That's what it feels like to me. Yeah. That's from what she said just there, like that's very confused. Yeah. You don't think that was her being triumphant? I think she thinks she was being triumphant, but I don't think she realizes that like, she doesn't realize the scope of her power and now it's like totally out mm -hmm. of her grasp. Huh. Yeah. yeah, which I is really be interesting because I think that if she understood, like, I don't know, I will say this, I don't know that they've been entirely clear about that, about like, no. yeah, her level of understanding, and maybe yeah. that's why it's been a little confusing for us watching it too. Mm -hmm. Like, what does she think is happening, and what is she, like, what is she, yeah, like, what she, is she, like, she, she going to happen next? Right, like she almost gets it. She like it's, it's she's like it's all for me. Like, okay, yes, but then you're like, he can't be like nobody cares about you, really. Right. You're 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 the evil or the trouble. Yeah, <laughs> right. But then Uncle George is saying you can't be alive because you're gonna ruin the whole world. Yeah, but then she calls. She like she's like you've been saying that shit my whole life. So she mm -hmm. like doesn't really believe that either. Right, she doesn't believe in that anymore. No, he hasn't been saying that. He's been well, preaching the doctrine. I'm just well, saying, even the rest of it. Like, yeah, you throw I, the whole thing out. Do you think as a child that he's been telling her you are the key to the world? No, I don't, I don't think, think so. she was ever good in that way. No, just yeah. maybe no, they knew to watch I'm, her. I'm just saying on on no, one I, mm -hmm, hand sorry. you're. On one hand, you're saying she doesn't matter. She's one person. Well, no. In the scope matters. of this whole universe. Right. On the other hand, Uncle George is saying, if you don't die, the world's going to end. Well, yeah, because that's what I believe in. But what I believe in is bullshit because you've tricked me since I'm a child. It's right. like just, it's just not said, believing yeah. the, whole, the, whole of the, the whole of it, whether she's special or not. She's, you think she believes that God is fighting with her but she also doesn't believe in mm. he's the cause of the end of the world right she doesn't believe in his god she's got her own mm -hmm. battle with what's going on I mean, she knows what happened to her she's been attacked she's seen things she's done things like she knows that that's all real but she doesn't think that like it, her his way is not the her way. choice is going to cause the end of the world right and them killing her is just another way for them to well i mean to kill her <laughs> no i'm Sorry, I'm just, I'm hearing you say that she's, like, delusionally believing that, like, God is fighting with her, but right. then... God is still real. It's just, I don't believe God in the way you believe in God. Right. Yeah. Okay, well... It's when nebulous. We get to... Huh? It's, like, kind of nebulous. It doesn't all totally connect because they don't really explain it very well, but I think it's right. going on. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that conversation with George helps, maybe helps to, like, clarify the, that a little bit. But I see what right. you're saying, Anne. Yeah. Because I was a bit, I was confused. I'm like, what is she, what is her understanding of what's happening or her right. belief? Because it's obviously different from Uncle George's belief. Because what she says to George, basically, is that, like, I don't believe in right. what your, I don't believe in what your God, what you say that your, that God can do. Like, I don't believe that anymore. Right, because I've been allowed to do so many other things outside of what it, whatever the norm is for them. Yeah, and look at how powerful I am. Right now, be. right now the creator is pissed with me specifically, mm -hmm. and look at all this. But no. Yeah. Oh boy. I do think there's some irony to the fact that she's getting like wheeled to her mm -hmm. supposed death, like in a in Dorothy's wheelchair. So fitting. Can't see anything. Mm -hmm. Just I like how not for a minute no one is like, what is what what is with these tunnels? <laughs> Nobody's like, this is crazy. Yeah, like I lived here how much how long? I'm like, what? So we get to this point where they deliver her to Uncle George, and so Julian realizes, wait a That's minute, Anna, come on, come on, it's done. Something's off about this, and Sean oh, doesn't Julian. seem to care. So. I don't know. I just thought, does Sean, like, Sean, did he really, does he really not care? Does he really, you know, it's kind of like, well, whatever's happening, it doesn't matter. 
But I mean, they brought her here based on the presumption that George was no longer with the cult. But I think it's right. pretty evident when they're dropping her off that sh- that he is. And I think that Julian has that moment of like, oh, crap. Wait a minute. What's going on here? Mm-hmm. Um, well, Sean is fine with everything because they already tried to get her killed once. Right. Yeah. But I don't think Julian was a part of that. Yeah. And I do wonder just like, what is Julian? What is the tie here? Why does he still care so much? Um, I I, the only thing I could justify it with is like you if you're close to somebody regardless of you if you like end up getting along or not you still mm-hmm. have some sort of affection I guess or like yeah yeah ah! Ah! so this shot Ay. the shot with Dorothy right there outside of the shower when she falls is almost an exact like replica of the shot where um she's crawling in the door when she's pregnant Mm-hmm. and she's like in pain i think it's right before she gets diagnosed with the uh plus what is it placenta previa right so that was an interesting callback i thought but also probably they... there's a reason for that or it's an important one yeah i love when they do stuff like that needing to like protect jericho mm-hmm. but feeling yeah, like well, she can't. Mm-hmm. yeah this shot also mirrors the one where Julian's looking at Leanne, looking back at her. Mm, yeah. I'm coming, baby. Oh. Like, one person does the right thing, the other person doesn't. Mm-hmm. Also, we talked about, you know, they talk about her being trapped, and to me, there's just that moment where she's crawling up there. It looks like, kind of like jail like jail. <laughs> yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Or even... Or even... I don't know, trapped by her, like, I mean, I know it's your son, but, like, her, like, want to connect with Jericho, like, it's a crib. Yeah, mm-hmm, exactly. And there's that thing between them. Mm. And she can't help him in the way that she wants to. Mm. Again. Again, yeah. Why should we pretend these frail bits of rope can contain you? We both know exactly what you are. When we watched it, like when I was watching it initially, I was I was grateful that George finally admitted, like, and said out loud, you know, obviously you're more powerful and you can get out of this, so let's not mm-hmm. pretend. Mm-hmm. But now I'm thinking back to what you guys said about how he's kind of doing that to stroke her ego in a way too. So that's what it feels like, yeah. yeah. At least to me. Yeah. What do you think, Liz? Do you think that was a little bit of both or I- Like I said last week, I think he he knows what's going to happen. He knows he's not going to come out of this alive. Yeah. So why bother? Yeah. But then what is his point? What? Like, if he intends to stop her, why would he just allow that to happen? Because he's he's trying to appeal to her better. Yeah, the goodness that he's hoping is still left in her. Correct. Mm -hmm. His perfect order is too great for us to comprehend. We can only serve it. You've been telling me that nonsense my entire life. I don't believe it anymore. Mm-hmm. I will never serve him again, ever. Mm-hmm. Then you truly have fallen. If Liam's an angel, if they're all fallen angels, we don't know what they've been preaching to Leanne or anyone else. It, it could be all about how we serve these families or, you know, how it's supposed to go. I I don't think it's about, like, religion proper. Well, that would be the religion proper for them. Like, whatever it is that they're... Like, there, is, there must be some sort of, like, selection process or necessity to apply them to certain people but not others. Well, that they you feel like he's probably talking about god right yeah right but i don't think it's it's in the terms that it sounds like of like here are the ten commandments and here's what you learn and you know that's what i mean it's a different thing but i do think that by him saying you have fallen that that kind of confirms that she is the fallen angel i don't think they all are though i just think that she is yeah she was something that was either supposed to be good or is yeah too powerful to be good or bad right oh i just thought he meant like you truly have straight like there's no more there's no talking to you 
Oh, of course, that's true too. Yeah, I, but I think it's I think it's both. Mm. I and I guess I just thought too with the use of the term like you have fallen and it just bring us. I felt like it was trying to tie it back to what we saw in the book in the previous episode, and in a way, therefore, is a confirmation of that part of what we saw since he's using that like that term that you've fallen. And then therefore, if her darkness is unleashed, there then the apocalypse happens, basically. Right. It's kind of what he says next, I think. It may not be the world that he wants, but the sun will still rise every day. No, it won't. The signs of clear should not exist. You are an open wound in the earth, and now the whole world suffers. So yeah, when he says you should not exist, I feel like that's just also kind of like confirms mm. that, you know, she's straight supernatural too, that they did like that they did bring her back. She did come back from being dead. That's why she shouldn't exist. Mm. So it makes her special. But also because of that and, and the, because of the fact that that, you know, she has that power, then when she chooses to use that power for non well i guess non benevolent reasons that that's what's causing the world to suffer and the darkness that's mm. kind of how i took that and when he talked about the turners being trapped in a living hell i did wonder like is this a cycle that keeps repeating itself have they been through with this with dorothy before has uncle george been through through this or not with dorothy sorry has Uncle George been through this with Leanne before? Is this like the first time this has played out? Or is this something that they've played out with her on multiple occasions? God will forgive you all your sins. And your wickedness. And there it was. Who said I was wicked? Oh. Oh. My George. Um, there's a work of art similar to the woman and the dragon uh it is in the book of revelation or it's related to the book of revelations it's this man and he's holding like six stars and i don't know what it's all symbolism but his mouth there's a sword coming out a double-edged sword coming out of his mouth and that's and that symbolizes the word of god Oh, so really? Like, this to be like an, an inversion of that. Like, you don't know what you're talking I don't believe in anything that you're saying. You're not speaking, you know, the truth. And she like, literally stabs his mouth shut. Well, again, it's an inversion of this painting. Instead right. of the sword coming... What? No, right. Instead of the sword coming down, it's going up. And it's, you know, under his mouth instead of coming out of his mouth. Why do you think that she stabbed him? Do you think she stabbed him that way to make him be quiet? Do you think she, I mean, what, why did she choose to stab him that way? But maybe, yeah, she didn't like what he said. Well, he said the word wicked. Yeah. Mm, mistake. He said I was wicked. Perhaps too, there's a part of her that felt like God, if he, you know, wouldn't call her wicked, that like in her mind, because doing... Uncle George said that, that that to her proved to her that like that was not God's word, that that was his his opinion or, you know, more of like a humanly earthly opinion. Mm. And that made her believe George less. I don't know. Maybe that's. I think it was just a, you know, her emotional immaturity taking mm-hmm. over. Yeah. Like, you know what? That Oh, you used the wrong word. Yeah. Fuck off. I'm done. That definitely looks like black goo that's coming out of his It does. Yeah. But then it's is it red on her from the other two? Or is it just the light that makes it look like dark goo? It's really dark. It's hard to tell with the lighting because it's like all like amber and like brown and but but it does look like specifically black to me. Have we seen that before? Other than him being like dirty? Oh, did we see that with with Aunt Josephine? I want to say we saw it before, but I I might be thinking of a different show. I don't remember. I don't remember, but it doesn't seem, I mean, it's weird because it's not real, but like, it doesn't seem weird to me. So I feel like we have, I just can't place it. I'm thinking that it, that it, maybe it's there because that's what it looks like. He, he already was dead. So yeah, something like that. 
I'm but I also thought one. like there was a moment where I thought oh perhaps like he is perhaps he is bad perhaps that bad goo like denotes that he's something <laughs> that he was not showing that he was polluted <laughs> he's got that bad goo right <laughs> no I know what you mean though. <laughs> they do that a lot in like different exactly that's yeah. what i'm saying yeah like a lot of times that means that like oh you got the right person they were pretending to be something they weren't you know right. or you're or you're sick or yeah. yeah exactly well and again think about that the bubbling hole in the basement yeah that yes, was a, that, that too was water. that was like weird yeah. yeah that's like the way that it takes over mm -hmm. infected by the yeah i'm still going with the dark entity but yeah and even when he, when like, well, I think, I don't know, I guess I'll mention this in a second, but he did say something, what was it? Oh, yeah, when he says you're an open wound of the earth, like he says an open wound of the earth. So it made me also think about like the hole in the basement being like the open wound. So she is the house. Or again, it was like another tie to the house. There will be no world for your children. Oh, Yeah. Are we being like poetic now or is she really that much of a threat? That's what because, I'm saying. Because yeah. they kind of go back and forth on that too a little bit, in my right. opinion. I I don't think they're going back and forth. I think it's always been well, pretty clear that no, it is, end of the world stakes. But then why does why why are the Turners so crucial and vital to this one pivotal thing? Like it seems so strange to bring it down on one family. Because Dorothy is the one she became obsessed with. Now the world has to pay, though? I guess she's just beyond, like, yeah, no, that makes sense. I don't know. She's but like, is she, I think, like, to me, it's, you know, it's like, is she the darkness, or? Well, that's what I was trying to talk yeah. about earlier. I, you know, I was thinking it was the dark entity, but then, I don't know, maybe that's not it. Maybe yeah. she just is dark from doing too many, making too many negative choices. Yeah. I mean, I suppose it's meant to be ambiguous. We're supposed to ask that question, but yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There was just so much about the dragon tail and... Yeah, that's a choice. That's for sure a choice. Mm -hmm. And the drawing of Lucifer having the dragon's tail mm. in the book. So, right. yeah. That's why I was thinking it's separate because they still leave so much room for empathy, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was thinking that like we we still had some empathetic Leanne moments through her conversation with Dorothy, but I feel like at this point, once this happens, then it's like straight up psycho Leanne for the rest of the episode. I feel like she's standing up for herself and protecting herself. Oh man, to I me, mean, she just gets so evil. Like it gets real scary here at the end. Yeah, yeah I'm, but with, it's like, I'm with you, Liz. You gave me up to be killed. Yeah. Right. So you're lucky. And, and she, didn't, she barely touched them. Well, she did knock Julian down, but mm. Sean stabbed himself. And they were both hurt by the means of their own vices or devices. Oh, right. Well, I mean, he just walked up to the door and all the glass broke and stabbed him in the chest. Yeah, the chair, the chair hit him or the window or the door exploded. Yeah. But right. he had his own paring knife. Mm. went to his chest julian uh the okay. wine bottles fall on him that's a, <laughs> yeah, good, that's that's a good point too you know i, I think it's oh, pointing yeah. to pointing to you sinned as well and this is what yeah. you get you can't really pin it all on Liam. that's a good observation i didn't even notice that that they were like, both sort of punished with their own vices that's interesting that's like exactly it you're like a victim of yourself even yeah. if you're a victim of the whole right so yeah. i'm i'm the leanne apologist <laughs> no yeah. i'm with you on that one for sure that's really interesting yeah i hadn't thought about it that way but i don't think she's wrong sense. she well, might suck but she's not wrong no and that's why i kept wondering about that's why <laughs> i want it to be a separate entity because it seems like she'll snap and go real far and then come back and be like, yeah, why can't you just be nice to me? Mm -hmm. She's such a child still. Well, yeah, she's confused herself. Yeah. Yeah. There's kind of a war going on within her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we get carry vibes. Definitely carry vibes. Mm -hmm. Especially once we see her like walk upstairs. 
It's red on her face there, so that's oh, no. interesting. So we see her go for the arms first, and then the eye. What one eye. Yeah. One eye. So I think that's an important thing to point out because she did not do it in order. And therefore the death may not take. So for all of us Uncle George lovers out there, perhaps he's yeah. not permanently gone. Oh. That brings up a question for me that may or may not matter. Do you think she did that because she also loves him and knows that he might come back? Mm, for whatever no. reason? That seemed more like a fuck your body. Fuck you. Yeah. No, but why not do it correctly? Fuck That's your body. I, mean. I like that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Unless when the death doesn't take, it is even worse. I thought it was yeah. her just not even thinking clearly, but like, rawr. It could be, yeah. Or being but, like, screw you, there's no order. Like, again, that's just more rhetoric or more yeah. BS. Oh, yeah. oh, she doesn't believe it anyway. Okay. Right. right. If she sure. doesn't believe okay. it, yeah. Then what does it matter? The order. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Mm. That makes yeah. sense. Thank I you. like that. Uh, in we were talking horror homages as they continue carry, but then also it follows um, with the wheelchair. Do you remember? Did oh, I in the beginning, that right? Maybe? Yeah. Oh no, I haven't seen that one. Um, and remember in the beginning when the guy has her in the wheelchair? She's like tied like, to the wheelchair. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I got that from Leanne being you know strapped to like an old wheelchair. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pretty much the same way. It was like ties or yeah. ropes or yeah. yeah. And with oh, the God. shot of her like of her being pushed in the it's like a bumpy road or bumpy mm -hmm. terrain. Aren't they like outside in a garage or something? Yeah, I, I haven't seen that in a while, but I remember that. Mm -hmm. Good catch. Fun to catch these little... Yeah. Oh, things. yeah. I agree. What it was that? very distinctly red versus Uncle George's black gooey. That's what I... That's yeah. why I, that, that, I caught that, too. Because even, even before, when it's just on Ooh, her that's face... That's true. Before she even kills him, it's red, and then... I uh, was thinking that the red was from the other, other two. Yeah, she gets them first, doesn't she? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Hmm. I love him. Oh, again, like One such eye. a childish gesture for Julian to be covering his eyes. Do you think they talked about it and now he's like, clearly she was supposed to be dead or he's just on board now? He's like, who's that? Who's that? Right? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, who's. Yeah, that's weird too. Like, what? <laughs> come on. Who else would it be? Isn't she singing the, she's humming Hush Little Baby, but isn't that what Aunt May was singing when we saw her at the end of season one? I think so. I, I think. remember. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that that's what she was, that's what she sings and hums to Jericho when she's rocking Jericho uh, in the nursery at the end of season one. They did such a, I love it. We've got, we've got a cheese plate out in case anyone's hungry. <laughs> Always time for cheese. Always. Ah, oh, yeah. you, for us. you absolute play. banana. <laughs> Did you catch that, though? No, why was it? But Julian he believes says, it. He said it was all because, she said it was all because of her. Right, yeah. Yeah, he believes All that. we heard her saying was, it's all for me. For me. Right. Yeah. And oh, he right. says, so I think we caught, like, the writers telling us that's what she meant. When Sean gets stabbed that way, like, to me, that's like, uh, that looks, uh, you know, I don't know. To me, that looked like it was much closer to some damaging spots than it, than it ends up being, but. For sure, yeah. Uh, and then when Leanne pulls the knife out, too, I also <sighs> just thought, like, oh, God, that's like oh. a recipe for bleeding out. Yeah, I was like, definitely don't do that. <laughs> yeah. So, again, and then, like, now Dorothy can stand. So, I just think that, like again where she's sort of exhibiting her power but she's still not killing them and is she mm. not doing that because she wants them to accept her or is she not doing it because they can't die anyway these i think well based on what she says later i don't know that she cares at all she just wants them gone but you're yeah. right she could have killed them like that's right. yeah why didn't maybe she out, maybe out of respect for dorothy mm. even though she wants them out of the house I don't think she would go that far with them i don't yeah, think that been, she wants them dead it's been too long i think she just wants angry. them to take her seriously i think she's angry and hurt mm -hmm. so she hurts them back at mm -hmm. you know a level that she thinks is acceptable like tit for tat kind of 
Yeah, kind of. <sighs> well, you know what they say. So hurt people hurt people. Amen. <laughs> Look at him. Yeah, I know. Really. <laughs> Dressed in white to boot. White or blue? Yeah. I just need to call 911 for sure. Okay. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. Julian. All right, sure. Yeah, she's just gonna let you walk on by. Look at her face. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Do you think she's doing the bathtub trick with Dorothy here? The shush? The way she did to the kid? Oh. oh. Mm, I don't know. I feel like it's a little different, but maybe not. We saw it also in the first attack during Zoo. Mm -hmm. with the couple. Mm. She gets shushed and she shushes them back and then shushes the kid. Yeah. I mean, it could be a way of her silencing people. I, I'm just wondering. But yeah. um, I like the call back to the season three finale when Dorothy was on the bottom looking up at Leanne. Mm -hmm. uh, back on the crawling thing. I think that's a parallel. It also makes me think about, again, about whether or not, like how much of a hand Leanne has had in even the miscarriage, like the, the Jericho's oh. death again. You know, I I brought this up briefly. I think last week, but you know, did the dark, like we've mentioned, did the dark entity in the home cause the death or did Leanne maybe help push that along by shutting the door and making it easier for Dorothy to forget about the fact that Jericho was still in the car? Uh, well, but oh, you mean with her power? Right. Yeah. I got the feeling that she wasn't that powerful until. She's until in she the house. In the home. Yeah. But, Which is probably true. It's probably like the darkness that's in the home. There's they've I don't know. There's been a lot of door activity though. Like a lot, yeah. And I mean, Aunt Josephine was opening and shutting doors in the season mm. two finale. Yeah. Um, although Aunt Josephine moved around the house and she was all in black, like she was also a dark entity. So it's kind of fuzzy on like I think what the the line between the dark entity and the dark people <laughs> you know like mm -hmm. and josephine because i i just felt like aunt josephine was really embodying that and now it seems like leanne is but how did that even come to be i guess is my question something that i hope gets answered but i don't know that it will i wondered if she silenced her because we don't hear Dorothy calling out to the 911 people. Yeah. She... Oh, true. Oh, that's true. Yeah, it's a she good point. She must have released her the ambulance. Because she's still saying, Liam, Liam. Yeah. And then we have the final moment between Dorothy and Leanne. How would you describe this? It's not parallel. It's not eerie as hell. It's yeah. beautiful. <laughs> Everything is wonderful now. But there's a term for it, like a mirrored, but mm -hmm. it's not mirrored. I didn't do anything, Mrs. Turner. The Mrs. Turner. It's just an <laughs> accident. So this is how a moment. Accidents can happen. You know how accidents can happen, obviously, Jericho. It's just um, yeah. Yeah. God. And what we are episode. left with the final showdown. I, yes, as it always was intended. I love yeah, well, when she has that last moment where she calls her Mrs. Turner, I, look, for me, when I was listening to that, I was like, oh, shit. Like, this chick has been pulling the wool over her eyes from day one. Like, that's really what I felt like was the implication, was that she was showing her, like, look how sweet I can be. Hi, Mrs. Turner. Like, and she was talking to her in the exact way that she did in the beginning, Right. And so it really did drive home for me the fact that, like, maybe this is just a really do like, is some, like, not that she doesn't have power, um, right. but, but that she is also very deranged and psychotic. And right. she has been from the beginning. And this was just kind of showing how easy it is for her to go back and forth between Whoa. what whoever she needs to be or however she needs to act to get what she wants. Even if, even if that's like her intention, it also shows she's still so naive because like ever, everything that's happened, you really think like a change in tone of voice is going to change you like destroying my family in one fell swoop, essentially. Yeah. But I don't think that that was her intention. I think her no. intention was to like show Dorothy that like, 
you, you know, you've, you've messed with me. You've messed with the wrong person. Right. And now she's being like, look, I'm still nice and we're going to get along mm-hmm. now because it's what I want now. <laughs> yeah. And they clearly set up this final showdown or this final situation that's going to happen between um, Dorothy and Leanne. And I know you had some thoughts on, on that Liz too. What were you ha- having discussed it now? What are your feelings on that? Well, I talked about it earlier, just yeah, about yeah. the how it's all about those two, mm-hmm. how yeah. they're bound together. Absolutely. So, what do you guys think is going to happen in the next episode? Uh, I guess, based on what we know now, I don't know. I guess Leanne will take some sort of caretaker role, or they'll try to have some kind of conversation. I assume Sean and Julian will be back in some capacity with with any hope. I wonder if the storm is going to get stronger. It's really hard to say at this point. They yeah. Keep everything so like tight and like sharp. Leanne is, I, I mean, I guess Dorothy, it's called a wig. So Dorothy's going to have to face the truth of what happened. Uh-huh. So you I would imagine that Leanne is going to make her, is going to be the one to tell her or to force her to remember. That's fucked up. Because nobody else will. That seems right. Yeah. Wait, what? Mm, even not? even like in this like i mentioned earlier even in you know this episode you've still got like sean and julian running their own little game mm. and trying to keep things from dorothy instead of actually telling her what's going on and now there are no obstacles yeah so in some ways leanne probably feels like she's doing the right thing mm-hmm. if she's Finally. going to she's gonna make dorothy wake up and be like this is what really happened and you have to face this or she's going to be like, oh, let's just live with Jericho happy ever after. I, I'm, I'm sure there's more to it than that. But yeah, it seemed, would be seem, would seem counterintuitive for her to like let the lie go. But I also see the power in that. So it's hard. I don't know if she would explain yeah. it or keep the baby anyway. I'm nervous. I am too. I just thought that episode was really something. It really was. Well, is there anything else that came up for you guys that you wanted to talk about before we wrap this one up? I mean, it feels like we're coming down on a good place, I think. It seems like we're getting to at least a final resolution that seems satisfying. But, you Mm -hmm. know, two episodes, a lot can happen. Yeah. (laughs) Gonna be exciting. Right, everybody. Well, thank you for joining us again. And uh, we've got two more left. So the next one's going to be the penultimate episode. I'm sure it's going to be emotional and Mm -hmm. bananas. And I do (laughs) hope we get some answers to some things, but I don't know. At this point, I'm I'm feeling like the answers that we're going to get are going to be going to be limited to what we know at this point. So, but you never know, I guess. They may have a few surprises left. Yeah, do you think there'll be like a twist or do you think we're going to end on on a more straightforward note? I feel like it'll be, um, well, this will sound kind of silly, but straightforward in the way that they'll resolve, you know, I guess the baby issue, but they'll still leave it ambiguous to some degree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us. And um Leave your comments and questions below. Tell us what you thought of the episode. And uh, we'll be back soon with more and be back to deep dive into Awake next time. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.